Hey guys, after the video I did testing desktop browsers for fingerprinting, I got a lot of comments and a lot of folks wanted to see if it would be the same results on a different operating system. Since we are a community, I'll do exactly what you asked for. For this video, I'm grabbing my phone and I'm going to run the exact same EFF cover your tracks test. I'll be testing a couple of browsers we did in the last one plus other browsers that are more mobile oriented. Remember, the goal is to see what browsers are best for fingerprint protection straight out of the box, no customizations, no hardening. And remember in this test, a randomized result is a good thing. It means you don't stand out and you are not easily identifiable or trackable across the web. On the other hand, a unique result or near unique result is a bad thing it means you stand out and you can easily be fingerprinted around the web. I have a feeling you're in for a shocker, so watch this video till the end because some browsers might surprise you. Let's get straight to it. We start with Safari. I'm curious about this one because in the last video I did where I tested these browsers on my Windows desktop, I left Safari out. Now also remember that all the tests I'll be carrying out are similar. I will navigate to cover your tracks to the cover your tracks tool, click on test your browser and wait for the results. So let's go. Um, so for Safari, we see that it has a unique fingerprint. This means the browser is leaking enough data to make you easily identifiable on the web. Let's keep it going with Chrome. In the last video, we got an almost unique fingerprint showing the Chrome desktop browser as expected was leaking data. Let's run the test here. And we get the same exact result, a nearly unique fingerprint. You're not any safer using the mobile version. Now, Samsung Internet Browser was one of the browsers we didn't test on desktop. And many people in the comments asked me to try it. Honestly, I don't have high hopes, but I'm curious why so many of you thought it was worth the shot. So let's get to it. Now, just for clarity, I'm running all these tests on iOS, but for Samsung Internet, I had to grab a Samsung phone. And as expected, we get a unique fingerprint. This is not good for privacy. Let's keep it going. Next up is Tor Browser. Now, this one doesn't have an official iOS app, so we'll stick with the Samsung phone for a moment. Tor performed well on desktop if you watched the last video, so I'm hoping it replicates those results here. Let's run the test. Now, this is unexpected. We get a nearly unique fingerprint. That's not good. It means Tor hasn't been consistent between its desktop and mobile versions. If you're using Tor browser on your phone, by default, you are trackable across websites, even without cookies. Up to the next one. In the last video, we tested the regular Firefox and it failed spectacularly. But for mobile, I'm deciding to test Firefox Focus instead. It's marketed as a more private version of Firefox, a browser for those quick get in, get out, and forget about it moments. Let's run the test. And this one fails as well. We get a unique fingerprint, which means your browser exposes enough identifiable elements to allow th tracking across sites. And at this point, it feels like nothing protects against fingerprinting on your mobile devices, but let's keep it going. Next is DuckDuckGo browser. I didn't test the desktop version in the last video, and many people say that I should have. So let's see how the mobile version handles fingerprint tracking out of the box. We run the tests. And here we get a unique fingerprint. So again, the browser leaks enough identifiable material to track you across the web. At this point, I'm tempted to say never browse on your phone without first hardening the browser. But let's see if any browsers offer decent protection out of the box. So we keep it going. 
Now we move to Avast Secure Browser. I really don't like Avast or anything affiliated with it. The Avast and Virus for me was a wake up call. You know, it came with so much bloatware, so well disguised also, you almost always end up installing something you didn't plan to. Avast often acted more like the virus itself. It slowed down my computer and became downright annoying. So I really don't expect much from the Avast Secure Browser. But this wouldn't be a proper test if we made decisions based on assumptions. So let's run the test. And just as I expected, we get a unique fingerprint. Not good for your privacy. I guess adding secure to the name is just part of the gimmick. Next is the Aloha browser. Now, to be honest, I don't know much about this one, but a few people mentioned it in the comments. So let's try it. We run the test here and once again same disheartening result a unique fingerprint and finally we have the brave browser when we tested the desktop app it did really well on the fingerprint test so i have high hopes for this one i'm just hoping it doesn't turn out like so great for pc poor on mobile let's run the test oh boy we get a unique fingerprint here as well so essentially, none of the mobile browsers we tested prevent fingerprint tracking. This is strange because when we tested on desktop, three browsers passed the tests. You can go check out that video if you haven't seen it already. At this point, it's beginning to feel like browsers are less safe on mobile than on desktop. And this has definitely inspired a new experiment. I'll be doing a comprehensive privacy test, not just fingerprinting, on a single browser across desktop, iOS, and Android to compare how consistent the results are. That might show whether certain devices are more rigged against privacy and security than others. So watch out for that video. But as far as this video is concerned, fingerprint protection with out-of-the-box settings is practically non-existent on mobile browsers. I would like to know your thoughts on this. Or perhaps there is something I'm missing. As always, you know I love interacting with all of you in the comments, so drop your thoughts below. I'm fortunate to have some real privacy experts watching the channel always, and I often get epiphanies and clarity from your discussions. And remember to like this video, we are still a very small channel, and I'm hoping we grow to the point where I can focus fully on creating content like this for you. Also, share this video, and if this is your first time watching, please remember to subscribe to our channel. Till the next one, stay safe out there.